Continuing the mimer, we're at the third ois, ois gimel, that's on page 10. And the theme of this section is talking about the, what's called midas hanetzach, because effectively what we've been saying is that as long as we are in the state of golos, which means we do not have a base amigdash, and as a result of that we do not have real revelation of Hashem in our lives, then two things fail. The first is our ability to see godliness, to perceive godliness. That is weakened. And the second, as a result, is that we're unable to appreciate intellectually the greatness of Hashem as we should. Now, naturally, if you don't perceive godliness and you don't have a deep, meaningful understanding of godliness, the net result is that you don't have a deep, meaningful emotional connection to Hashem. So that's what we battle with when we're in the state of Golos. So what do we have? We've learned so far that in spite of everything, no matter how spiritually weakened we are, we still retain midas hanetzach, the capacity for perseverance, the ability to just push on and do what Hashem wants, in spite of the fact that we don't feel inspired or connected or deeply mindful. We just push on and we go ahead and do what needs to be done. And that becomes the key factor, the Rebbe says, of life at this time, of our Judaism at this time. The key element is the ability to keep on going in spite of all the obstacles. And the reason for that, he explained, is <clears throat> because the neshama, the, the aspect of the soul that allows us the opportunity to persevere, that allows us the opportunity for midas hanetzach, is actually the deepest part of the soul. So there's a tremendous irony over there because the ability to push yourself to do what needs to be done even when you don't feel like it and when you don't understand it and when you don't appreciate it and you don't feel connected, sounds actually like you're pulling on a very rudimentary, simplistic part of your soul. Turns out you're dealing with the deepest part of your soul. This relates to a saying of the Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, where he used to say that the pshitos, the simplicity of a simple Jew, a simple Jew being somebody who doesn't necessarily have much learned understanding and doesn't necessarily have much matured spiritual development, yet they go ahead and do what they have to do, which is exactly what we're talking about. So the previous Rebbe says the pshitos, the simplicity of the simple Jew, is directly connected to the pshitos of Ein Soif, to the simplicity of Hashem, as Hashem is completely infinite. It's a very profound thought, and that's what we're talking about over here in this part of the Mimer. So our ability to be able to push on, to be able to do what we have to do in spite of our own lack of interest and inspiration or understanding, in spite of all the obscuring of godliness and the darkness in the world around us, the fact that we can do that is because the essence of our soul is linked in to what we called in the last segment, Pnimius Hakeser the deepest part of Hashem. Let's put it simply like that. The deepest part of Hashem. So we are currently slap bang in the middle of the paragraph, the second paragraph on page 10, at the second word. This principle we learn from a verse which is said just after the story of King Saul's failure as a leader. So the prophet Shmuel says, so the Pasuk says, Netzach Yisrael, at, in the context of that particular verse, it sounds like it's saying the eternity of the Jewish people. So the eternity of the Jewish people will never falter. The terms that he, the expression that he uses is, Lo Yishaker, it will never be proven to be false. Velo Yinochem, and it will never compromise, it will never lose its power and strength. And he uses this very interesting expression, because he is not a man that he should change his mind. So we're talking about netzach, which of course is the aspect of the soul that we're trying to define at this point. Our ability to be absolutely dedicated to Hashem in spite of everything, which we have in turn said links to netzach in Hashem's realm, netzach in the spiritual or elevated worlds, which we said in turn links to the highest level of godliness, Therefore, it is defined as loy adam. It is not like a person, and loy yishakev loy yinachem. It can never become false, and it will never falter. The inyan hanechom v'hashino yishayech rak bivachinas adam. The principle, the possibility of regret, the possibility of compromise, 
the possibility of change is a human experience. In other words, if something is finite, then it has the possibility of not being applicable anymore and it needs to change. If something is finite, then if the circumstances require, it may have to modify itself to apply itself appropriately to new circumstances, to new realities. So anything that fits into the realm of what we call Adam, which is anything that has a defined structure, may at any given time have to shift, have to backtrack, have to compromise. Netzach Yisrael, the eternal connection the Jew has with God, which is what plays out when we put our foot down and we say, I'm going to do what Hashem wants, even though it's not easy for me, that lo yishakev lo yinachem, is never going to change. That resolve, that resolution, that commitment is absolute and it is immutable inside of ourselves. So what can change? What can shift? What does compromise? Adam. Now when we use the word Adam, we could be referring to people. Adam is a collective noun for humans, specifically actually for the Jewish people. As the prophet Yeshaya says, Adam Atem, you are Adam. It's a unique expression referring to the Jewish people. But on the other hand, we also use the word Adam to represent the entire superstructure of the spiritual realms. In other words, what we call Hishtalshalus. Hishtalshalus is the interconnected hierarchy of spiritual energies how this energy is more elevated and more complex than that energy, how this energy feeds that energy, how this energy balances that energy. The entire rubric and structure of existence is called Hishtalshalus and is nicknamed Adam. So when the verse says, when the Pasuk says, Loi Adam Hu, that this Netzach element is not Adam, what we're actually saying is, not only is it not like a human being who sometimes flip-flops around and makes decisions and then regrets them. What we're saying is this level of Netzach Yisrael, this incredible capacity for total dedication to persevere, to push, to do exactly what Hashem wants in spite of all the obstacles in our way, that is loy Adam. It is not bound by the reality of the spiritual structure called Hishtal Shalos. That means everything that we know about spirituality, everything that we know about spiritual worlds, everything that we know about flows of energies, everything that we know about the natural and the supernatural all belongs to the realm called Hishtalshalus. So to us, from our vantage point as humans looking up, Hishtalshalus stretches way beyond the reach of the human mind. Hishtalshalos includes some of the most powerful and incredible spiritual experiences and revelations. And this Netzach does not belong to Hishtalshalos. It exceeds and transcends Hishtalshalos. And therefore, by extension, because we're talking over here about this Netzach element that derives from and is rooted in Something loy adam, not part of the system, higher than the system, not bound by the structures and the strictures and the limitations of the world as we know it. And even the world as we don't know it, but only the angels perceive it. So we talk, we're dealing with something over here that is completely beyond anything that will ever be described in any kind of spiritual teaching. Because Netzach reaches and originates at such a high level, that's why it will never change. Change is a factor of living in a structured, finite environment. That's when things change. The ability to endure, to survive, that means I get to a point where change is not an option, not only because the alternative is too frightening, but because it's just not an option, because this is truth, and truth does not change. For example, here's an example we can all relate to. During the course of a person's lifetime, there's certain things that are part of my histal, so it's part of my personal structure. So in order for me to be a happy person, in order for me to have a good state of being, state of mind, emotional state, I need to have 
the ability to interact with my family. I need to be able to have certain creature comforts. I need to have food in the fridge. I need to know there's money coming at the end of the month. I need to have good health. There's a whole variety of things that make the histalsalus of my life. If circumstances change, I might have to compromise on some of that. For example, at the moment, because of a health issue that affects the entire world, I may not be able to see certain members of my family, even though I've always said that my family is everything. And if I don't have them, my life is lacking in the most extreme. But right now, it's just not available. So I make do. And I, <clears throat> I modify things, and it's difficult to do, but I have to do it, and so I compromise. Likewise, for Pesach, there's certain things that I would normally have to have in order for my Pesach to be good. I would have to have certain people at the Seder. I would have to have certain products in my kitchen. Not happening this year. So I modify. And life goes on. But when it comes to, God forbid, a direct threat to a person's life, and they have to confront an issue of self-preservation, will I survive this? Will I be able to keep myself alive? That does not compromise. You don't get to a point where you say, well, look, it, you know, it's, it's a big deal and it's important for me, but under the circumstances, I'm going to reconsider. We, we don't do that. This is loy adam. This is not part of the structure. This is what makes the entire structure worthwhile. So if a person, God forbid, is threatened, their life is threatened, what's the point of, a cre of creature comforts and a salary and a nice product at your Seder table? None of that is relevant when you get to the core, when you get to the truth, when you get to what can't be compromised, what cannot be sold, what cannot be given up, what cannot be exchanged. That's called loy adam. The part of us that is not defined by our persona, the part of us that defines our persona. So threaten somebody to take away their life and they will come out guns blazing because that can't be debated. That can't be challenged. That can't be compromised. That's how it is spiritually as well. There's a part of us that understands spiritually that maybe I can take a shortcut here or avoid a particular mitzvah there or allow myself an indulgence. But the bottom line is, I can't lose the connection. That's non-negotiable. To lose the connection, that's non-negotiable. That's where Netzach derives from, from the fact that at the core of my being, I'm absolutely 100% dedicated, even if, even if I'm not conscious of it. In the same way as I might not be conscious of how much it means to me to be alive until I realize that that's not necessarily guaranteed. Then suddenly I think about it differently. By the same token, it's possible that I don't necessarily think how much of an issue it is not to be connected to God until suddenly it is challenged. And then I say, whoa, hang on a second, I cannot give this up. Can't give this up. And so because it's the core of who I am and it's the core of my relationship with Hashem and I literally can't give it up, that is why the circumstances and the time won't make that resolve weaken. In fact, in difficult times, it will strengthen, if anything. Not that the resolve will strengthen. It's just that I'll be more aware of the fact that this is actually my resolve. That's why it says, That's why Netzach is 100% available and revealed even in a time of Golos. I can compromise other things in the time of God. Maybe I won't learn as much. Maybe I'll be less perceptive. Maybe I won't have the same depth of emotional connection as they had in previous generations. We can work a way around all of those things if we need to. But in Golos, the ability to persevere because I need this connection because this connection is central to my being is not weakened by my lack of perception or the lack of godliness in my immediate environment, or the fact that I don't see miracles, or the fact that I'm feeling a little bit uninspired. Veloy oid, not only that. But what we do discover is that during the experience of the golos, when we are so spiritually deprived, or befrat beikvesa de meshicha, especially in the time that is called the footsteps of Mashiach, in other words, when we're really, really close to Mashiach, then, what is fascinating is that although we don't have what they had in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, we don't have all the great revelation, we don't have all the great miracles, we don't have the great prophets and sages, 
what we do have and even in greater measure than what they used to have in the time of temple is Netzach. That means to say that in today's world, we are more capable of digging our heels in and saying, I won't compromise on my Judaism. We are more capable of making sacrifices for our Judaism because the netzach, the perseverance, the willingness, the urge to connect is immutable. So we actually land up because we're challenged, because the world is darker, because we can't rely on the depth of our academic understanding or the beauty of our spiritual awareness. Because of that, we will probably be more dafka in our connection, more solid in our dedication, more unmoving and uncompromising in our, with whatever part of Yiddishkeit it is that we hang on to, that we won't let it be anything diluted. We're more like that now than they were in the time of the Beis Hamikdash. And that's an incredible insight that the Rebbe gives us at this point in the Mimer. And then based on that, that will bring us to understand why it is that this is what's needed in order to bring Moshiach, which of course we'll learn in the next piece.